Welcome to the Uzziah Show. I am your host, Uzziah, your success strategist. And if you have any questions about your business, career, or finances, then this is the show for you. Welcome. I am really excited and fired up for tonight's broadcast. I don't know about you, but tonight is really important because I'm going to tell you why millennials are financially screwed. By the time you're done watching this video, you're going to know exactly what's coming and how to prepare for it so that way you can get your way out of disaster. Please watch today's video. This is so very important. And if this is your first time joining, I want to welcome you to this broadcast. My name is Josiah. I'm a professional business consultant, and my job is to help you get out of debt, so you can start your own business. And part of the reason I feel that starting a business is important is because that's one of the things that's going to protect you from what, what's to come. One of the reasons why so many millennials are financially screwed is because of all the employment that's happening today. So if you are on, please make sure you leave me a comment below. Tell me your name and the city that you're from so that way I could give you a shout out and show you some love. Now, as we talk about this topic, guys, I need y'all's feedback. Are you financially screwed? Yes or no? <laughs> Do you feel like you were financially screwed? Now, obviously, guys, this channel is all about creating generational wealth. It's about financial empowerment. So I want all of you guys to know that there is a way out. But some of you guys may have a ton of student loan debt. Some of you guys may be up to your neck in credit cards, and you may be feeling like you are a part of a generation of people that got dealt a bad hand. On this broadcast, I'm going to go over an article that I saw on the Huffington Post and what you need to take away from it in order for you to have financial freedom. So let's go ahead and begin. For those of you guys that are just now joining, welcome. Please make sure that you smash the like button. And if you like this broadcast, then please show your boys some love and give a super chat. All you got to do is tap the dollar icon below the live chat box. Okay, so now let's talk about millennials. Now, I'm a part of the millennial class, right? Why millennials are facing the scariest financial future of any generation since the Great Depression. How many of y'all believe this to be true? If you believe that it's true, press one. If you believe that it's false, press two. I want to see what y'all's answers are, okay? That's going to play a major part in how we go through tonight's episode. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people that think that it's number two, right? And that may very well be part of the reason why there are so many millennials that are unprepared for what's to come. I'm not telling you where I stand on it just yet, <laughs> but I am saying that if you're not thinking about any problems whatsoever, and you just think that you're just riding on easy street in the economy, I'm telling you, you may want to think twice because as we go through some of the points on this article, I just want you to think about what's where the economy is going and how the middle class is being done away with. Now, the writer in this article talks about how he's in uh, the millennial generation. For those of you guys that don't know, millennials consist of anyone born between the years of 1982 all the way through 2004. And this writer at the time that this was written is 35 years old. OK, he says that he's the oldest millennial, the first millennial. And for a decade now, he's been waiting for adulthood to kick in. His rent consumes nearly half of his income 
and he hasn't had a steady job since Pluto was a planet. Now, this is a part of what we're going to go over on this broadcast. There are certain things from this article that are very true. And then there are parts of this article where if you're not making the right preparations, knowing that this can happen, at some point you can't blame the economy. At some point, you have to blame yourself. But the reason why we're going over this on tonight's broadcast is because the things that I'm showing you guys from today's talk is not going over what you learn in school. What I'm showing you guys in tonight's broadcast is the things that you really need to know about how to have successful outcomes in the real world. And part of the reason why most millennials are financially screwed is because everything that they've gotten in terms of information about personal finance either came from family and friends that were in previous generations whose model for economic wealth looks very different than the wealth formula of today. If you got all of your financial tips from your grandfather who's getting a pension, then obviously that's not going to work for you because pensions are going to be nowhere around. If, if you're getting all of your advice from somebody that's living off of Social Security, by the time you reach retirement age, Social Security won't even be around anymore. OK, so I want you guys to know that the economy is changing. But if you're still relying on the same outdated information from previous generations and an outdated school system that never taught you how to be rich in the first place, then you absolutely have the makings of somebody that's going to be screwed. So on today's broadcast, we're going to work you out of the matrix and show you how to unscrew yourself into financial independence. OK, so this person says we've all heard the statistics. More millennials live with their parents than with roommates. This is also important. We are delaying partner marrying and house buying and kid having for longer than any previous generations. And according to the olds, our problems are all our fault. Now, that's cat. I'm going to tell you guys as a millennial that has a higher net worth than many people older than me, this economic problem is not due to millennials alone. The economic problem that millennials are facing is a byproduct of where the economy has been going for a number of years. For a number of years, we've been seeing certain decisions made in government, as well as in different markets, which guaranteed that we would be in the financial bind that we are in today. You know, if you graduated from college around 2008, you were going into a pretty jacked up marketplace because you entered in during a time of a recession. Some of those things are out of your control. Millennials did not create the student loan bubble. However, Due to our ignorance, a lot of us don't know how to get our way out of it. And even when we think about that, guys, there are so many of us that came from backgrounds where the only thing that was taught to us was go to school, make good grades and get a good job. And all you did was follow your parents' narrative. That's the reason why I'm trying to show y'all, if you still stick to a bunch of outdated advice, you will be financially screwed. Half the reason why a lot of y'all might be financially screwed right now is because of all of the unsolicited, uh, unsolicited advice that you took in. So y'all, I want y'all to leave me comments on this, okay? I want y'all to interact with me as we're going through tonight's show. Is it only millennials' fault why we're in the situation that we're in? Is it because we're all lazy? Is it because we don't work as hard as the generations that came before us? Why are millennials financially screwed? I want to know from you. In fact, I'm gonna put up the link right now for y'all to cam up. And man, 
I just saw my brother Abaya with the $50 super chat. Thank you, my brother. I really appreciate you, man. Shout out to our top sponsor for the night thus far, We The People University. If y'all haven't checked out this brother's channel, y'all are missing out, okay? This is one of the fastest growing channels on YouTube. No cap. Go and check out this brother's channel. Make sure that you subscribe. And make most importantly, make sure that you educate yourself on the information that he's sharing on his videos. OK, this is going to help you. This could be life save saving in information. So that way, if you get pulled over by the cops, you know exactly uh, what to do. Thank you so much, fam. Now, DD said some of us haven't been taught by our problem. Uh, by our parents. This is true also. <laughs> That's another part of the problem that we face as millennials. So guys, as we do this broadcast, I know that you think that I'm just painting with a very broad brush, but our circumstances may be different. You know, some people are able to live at home with their parents. Some people are not. Some people are college, college educated. Others don't have a college degree. And so as we go through tonight's broadcast, we're going to be talking about millennials in general. And while everybody's circumstances may be different, these are very important lessons that we all need to know, regardless of your wealth situation, whether you are in poverty or whether you are rich right now. I think this is a very important discussion for us to have, because if you don't take heed to tonight's broadcast, you may regret it. OK, so some of you guys, if you watch this broadcast until the very end, you may end up thanking yourself years later. All right. So make sure that y'all click this link uh, if you want to cam up with me and talk about this further, okay? We're talking about why millennials are financially screwed. If you're just now joining, please make sure that you smash the like button. And also, if you love this channel and you want to keep this thing going, then please make sure that you donate to tonight's broadcast. For those of you that are watching this after the live broadcast is over, you can still donate. All you need to do is click the links in the description below. Now, back to the article. Why are millennials financially screwed? Well, the writer says that we are in the worst economy. I'm going to go back to their specific words. Why millennials are facing the scariest financial future of any generation since the Great Depression. A lot of you are familiar with an economic crash that's on the way. You're familiar with the stock market being headed towards a crash. You are familiar with us being on the verge of hyperinflation. Gas is getting ridiculous all across the country. And everything else is rising beyond the standard wage. The average American works at a nine to five job that at best pays them a 2.5% salary increase. But the housing market is rising at a rate that's faster than that. The education market is rising at a rate that's faster than that. The cost of food is going up. The cost of gas is going up. So how can we ever compete with these prices? This is why Michael Hobbs is saying what he's saying. But I want us to unpack this a little bit, okay? He's talking about how old Older people, shout out to Yasha Allah. I want to be very uh, <laughs> respectful, of course, to everybody that's on this broadcast. According to the olds, as the author writes, our problems are all our fault. We got the wrong degree. We spend money we don't have on things we don't need. We, ha we still haven't learned to code. We killed cereal and department stores and golf and napkins and lunch. Mention millennial to anyone over 40 and the word entitlement will come back at you within seconds. Our own intergenerational game of Marco Polo. This is what it feels like to be young now. Not only are we screwed, but we have to listen to lectures about our laziness and our participation trophies from the people who screwed us. OK, so the reason why he's saying from the people who screwed us is because the generations that came before us 
played a part in some of the economic meltdowns that we experience today. For example, when you look at the housing bubble that took place within the past decade, that happened because a lot of people were buying homes that they couldn't afford. Banks at the time was giving away mortgages to anybody that would sign up for it. And as a result, a lot of people were met with foreclosure over time. This is the reason why banks have become a lot tighter on who can qualify for a mortgage. But society is shifting because at one point, everybody thought that they could play a part in the American dream. When you look at baby boomers and other generations of people that came before us, you had a lot of people that thought that just by getting, you know, an average job that you could get the nice house with the white picket fence and you could just live the dream. Now, in our current generation, you know all too well that unless you are really getting to the money, you're not going to be living any kind of dream lifestyle. You can act like that's what you're going to do on social media, but as the cost of living increases, your money will slow up. And so we're going into a couple stats that's mentioned in the article. We've taken on at least 300% more student debt than our parents. We're about half as likely to own a home as young adults were in 1975. This is true. And a part of the reason why this is true is because in 1975, the average American had a better economic chance of getting a home because the regulations were not as tight as they are today. And the cost of housing has inflated drastically, okay? But we're gonna talk more about this, okay? One in five of us is living in poverty. So uh, according to the US Census, young adults that are aged from 18 to 34 years old, one out of every five of us in that age range are living in poverty according to our finances, okay? Now, this may be the scariest thing. Based on current trends, many of us won't be able to retire until we're 75. Now, guys, I think that you can see where the market is going because even in the current generation of people that are in their retirement, there's a lot of them that are unable to retire all because of the cost of living that's set before us. This is only going to get worse over time for the average person because unlike the current retirement generation, we won't have access to social security. The value of a dollar will be worth less tomorrow than it is today. So we've got to understand how we can overcome some of these trends. We can't just look and say, oh my God, society is going to hell in a handbasket. We've got to prepare ourselves for what's to come and understand how financial literacy works. Guys, you need to stop just thinking that just because I have a job, I am set for life financially. This is the reason why so many people end up getting screwed. When you don't go through life with a financial plan, you end up finding yourself in all kinds of bad situations. I've got family members that have been working Every single day, as long as I've been alive, I'm saying these people have been gainfully employed. They've never been out of a job and are still homeless. And that's partially based upon them not having a financial plan, not understanding financial literacy, and living in locations where the cost of living was absolutely absurd. So if you're not privy to this, you will suffer. Now, let's talk about this a little bit more. And I hope that y'all are leaving some comments, okay? The writer says it's not just about the numbers. 
What is different about us as individuals compared to previous generations is minor. What is different about the world around us is profound. Salaries have stagnated and entire sectors have cratered. At the same time, the cost of every prerequisite of a secure existence, education, housing, and health care has inflated into the stratosphere. OK, so a lot of you already know the things that he's talking about because you're already experiencing it. So I'm not going to bore you through the entire article. Instead, I'm just going to walk you through a few of the stats that's being gone over, okay? We already talked about how our generation is taking on more student loans than the generations that came before us, okay? We all know about how there's a lot of people that lost their jobs whenever you know what happened. I want you to look at this stat right here. It says, over 10 years, the typical 09 grad could earn up to $58,000. T less than the typical 07 grad. Okay. So he's going to go on to talk about in this article about how we're the primary generation that actually ended up earning less and having less work than the generations before us. Look at what it says right here. The number of hours of minimum wage work needed to pay for four years of public college. Baby boomers needed 306 working hours. Millennials need 4,459 hours. So it is obvious that the way that America was designed for even minimum wage workers to make it at one point is non-existent in the modern day. OK, so we're only going to go through a little bit more, y'all. OK. Average annual return on stock market investments from a 401k plan. Baby boomers, 6.3. Millennials, 2.9. Okay. And the reason why I'm going over all of this is because everything that this writer is saying is a problem um, is actually going to be our solution because us actually being wise enough on these statistics is going to show us how to get around it. Okay. So now he's talking about in the article about how uh, so many millennials are being pushed out of any opportunities to get housing. Okay. And this is one of the most um, disturbing factors, I think, on why a lot of millennials uh, feel as though they're going to be financially screwed or will. <laughs> it's going to be more than a feeling for a lot of people, unfortunately. A lot of millennials are going to be financially screwed because they're going through life unaware of how to plan uh, financially. And that's the reason why there's going to be so many people finding themselves into a deficit. Okay. So as we look at some of these statistics that are going on right now, it says the housing crisis in our most prosperous cities is now distorting the entire American economy. For most of the 20th century, the way many workers improved their financial fortunes was to move closer to opportunities. Rents were higher in the boom towns, but so were wages. Since the Great Recession, the good jobs, secure, non-temp, decent salary have concentrated in cities like never before. America's 100 largest metros, meaning largest metropolitan cities, have added 6 million jobs since the downturn. Rural areas, meanwhile, still have fewer jobs than they did in 2007. For young people trying to find work, moving to a major city is not an indulgence. It is a virtual necessity. OK, so what the author is saying is that back in the day, it made sense for everybody to move to a metropolitan city because you were able to work at a job that can cover the cost of the housing in the surrounding areas. But now some of the best companies are headquartered in places where the cost of living is astronomical. So you would actually have to. Uh, move out a lot farther from where you're working just to be able to afford 
having a roof over your head. And again, uh, one of the things that the author talks about is how we as a generation of millennials are really delaying a lot of major life events. Uh, for example, buying a home, um, raising a family, all of these types of things. Uh, we're delaying all of this because we don't have the exact same wealth uh, that other generations had that was on our timeline, okay? So as you can see, <laughs> this is a very extensive article. Obviously, I'm just glazing over certain key points. It says 56% per of millennials with student loans have delayed a major life event, including getting married or having kids because of their debt. Okay, guys, so now is the part where I'm going to dissect this article to show you how you can unscrew your way into financial independence. I'm going to show you guys how, despite the fact that all of these statistics that he quoted from are true, by you having full awareness of it and planning ahead, you can actually see around the corner. You can maneuver around the train rather than getting hit by the train head on, okay? So for those of y'all that are on, please make sure that you smash the like button, okay? Please make sure that you donate, all right? Because that will help to keep this show on air. Let's go back to the article now, and let's talk about some of the key perspectives that you need to know about these statistics so that way you can stop yourself from being financially screwed. While I'm doing that, guys, and putting the article back, okay, please make sure that you leave a comment below and leave me a comment about which one of these statistics affect you the most. Is it housing? Is it your student loans? Is it you delaying a life event all because of what's happening in the economy? I want you to leave me a comment and let me know uh, which uh, of this uh, is affecting you the hardest. So that way I could give advice in real time on ways that we can overcome it. So now going back to this article, okay, and make sure that you share this with a friend. The more we know, the better we can prepare for it. If you know that the train is coming, you can dodge your way around the train rather than being hit by it head on, okay? So when we talk about first and foremost, right, um, my rent consumes nearly half my income. I haven't had a steady job since Pluto was a planet. Let's start right here. There's only two ways for you guys to live life in the future. Either get used to the fact that you're going to have to swip, switch jobs ever so often or create a job for yourself. Now, see, this is where the rubber hits the road, guys, because this is either when we can start complaining and say, oh, yeah, you know, easier said than done, Uzziah. Just create your own job. Ha ha, that'll do it. We can either cry and complain about how hard it is to avoid the devastation to come, or we can actually work our way into avoiding the devastation altogether, right? You could either put things in place to soften the blow, or you could just cry over spilled milk, wait for us to get screwed financially, and then you're going to be hit the hardest when it comes. If we know that we're no longer in an economy where you could work at the same job like your parents did for the next 30 and 40 years, you now have to start getting congruent with the modern economy. The modern economy rewards professionals that will move jobs every two to three years. I'm speaking primarily about people that work in corporate arenas. If you work in a corporate sector and you are college educated, 
one of the most effective paths for you to rise in your career and make more money is for you to switch jobs every two to three years. And why is that? The reason why that is, is because one of the most important times for any uh, person that has a job is when they're being onboarded. The, one of the most critical times for you to have any job is when you're being given an offer in the first place, because that's when you are in a position to negotiate. So when you're in the job, you don't have the same leverage of getting a promotion, uh, demanding a certain job title, expecting to make a certain salary. By the time that you've accepted the job, you're locked in. And the reason why so many people are benefiting from job hopping is because if you're working at an average job that gives you a 2.5% salary increase at best, financially, you could be better off negotiating the money up front, aiming high, and then two to three years later, going to another company and doing the exact same thing. It's a numbers game, guys. The economy is not built for you to stay at one company forever and make a killing unless you are on a path to be a part of their executive board. Unless you're able to work your way up to senior manager, director, uh, being on the C-suite, the, the economy itself is not designed for you to make it. So don't complain about the current. Just follow where the current is going. And if you're not of the mindset of job hopping from one position to the next, then you may want to start considering the possibility of creating your own income. This is the reason why I always talk to you guys about starting your own businesses on this channel. It does not need to be a full-time business. This can be something that you set up on the side as a hedge for whatever it is you're lacking for from the company that you work for. OK, these are just some basic things that you can put in place to help you with getting out of debt. OK, so when we talk about this whole job piece, you got to know how to maneuver through the job arena. And let me say something else about the job market. Right. If we know that that minimum wage is no longer going to cut it, then we've got to start investing in skill sets that allow us to make more money than minimum wage. Now, again, when we hear the objection of, oh, but Uzziah, you know, I'm a college educated person and, you know, they're not offering the jobs even in these high demand areas. Again, this goes back to another one of the critical points. This is where you not only go out into the job market expecting another company to compensate you, you devise a financial plan where you can create multiple streams of income from the skills that you learn. So let me give you guys an example of what I'm saying. I'm going to take some of my skills that I have personally, and I'm going to show you exactly what I would do in this situation. I understand marketing. I would look to get a job as a social media manager while also monetizing my marketing skills on social media myself. I don't need to depend on anybody for me to set up a YouTube channel. I can set up a YouTube channel. I can start running broadcasts. I can make money from Google ads. I can make money from the super chat money. Let me check that to see if anybody else is donating. Like I can do all these different things just built around the exact same skill set that I have today. Now I'm so happy that I checked the super chats because we got a new top sponsor on this broadcast, LA for Life. All right, my brother Abaya is on, and I'm going to cam you up on this one, King. 
Our sister LA for life just took over the crown for the hundred dollar uh super chat. Thank you so much for that. LA for life says blessings, brother Uzziah. I was just having this conversation with my family yesterday. You stay in the no zone. Tonight's donation is for the most valuable information on the internet right now. Let's go. Thank you so much, my sister. That's really, really touching. Okay. Uh, all I'm trying to do is show our community how we can get to the next level by avoiding the traps that are in place. Okay. To be quite honest with you guys, everything that I'm going over tonight has always been the formula for success. The only thing about it is now it's just more amplified because the middle class is being destroyed. So now either you got it or you don't, okay? But speaking of valuable information on the internet, I want to welcome my brother, We The People University. We got my brother Abaya on. How you doing today, my man? Hey, Shalom King. And I, I just want to say real quick, Sister LA for Life, she wants to turn this into a competition, huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's going for the throne, man. Y'all y'all know, for those of y'all that are on the broadcast, uh, whoever has the highest super chat is the official sponsor for tonight's broadcast. So, yeah, it, it looks like uh, LA for Life is gunning for that for that crown, man. It looks like she want to get get that crown for uh, why millennials are financially screwed. She got it, man. I, I appreciate it, man. I'm just trying to whatever I can help with because, man, like I said, it was, your, it was you who helped me, you know, to start going, man. This information you give me not so valuable, man. It's like, you know. I don't know why everybody don't take to it, man. They need to. I, I, it works. Exactly. It works. It works. So, 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 what do you think about what I've been going on, going over thus far about uh, why millennials are financially screwed? Uh, can you kind of see that perspective, and what what's your take on the whole situation? It's funny. Uh, I forgot the percentage, but I was in and out. But I heard you say um, about uh, young adults are not. What was it 50% less likely to own a house? The yes. Mm -hmm. And me and my wife, we're trying to get a house right now. And the difficulty, the level of difficulty ex is extreme. Yeah. When I say um, we're, we got to the point where we were just tired of looking, that home buying excitement feeling just, it goes out the window. And uh, one of the, uh, the brokers, he was like, listen, man, ever since, you know, back in the day, they made things extremely hard. So when you said that, that resonated. I'm like, yeah, that's true. Right. It's like you either you can't get it or you just get tired of trying to. It's hard. It's really hard Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. And I'm so I'm so glad that you brought that up, man, because uh I myself am on under contract right now for a property. And you know, it's just been it's been hell, man. I might not even see this property until like two years from now at the rate that things are currently going. Because yeah. when you factor in everything that's going on with <coughs> you know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. uh, when you factor that in. Plus, um, the fact that, you know, when when you know what 19 popped off, yeah, uh, it it made it so that mortgages were only given to people that had either 700 credit scores or higher and 20 percent down. And so obviously for a lot of people, that's extremely unrealistic. Right. Because if the housing market is going up so high for to expect the average person to have a 20% down payment is ridiculous. And so, you know, I could definitely see how a lot of millennials are being squeezed out of getting homes. And this is the reason why I always talk about the importance of having multiple streams of income. So, you know, just in your experience, when you think about how difficult it is, right, to be able to get that home, what are some of the steps that you're taking personally to try to uh secure the property that you want to get you know what i mean without going into you know a lot of detail about your financial situation and all that what i mean is um what what steps are you taking from a financial perspective whether it be in terms of your credit whether it be in terms of down payment what steps are you taking to be able to uh, in order to qualify um those streams of income that you talk about that's that's uh what i've been on trying to set up multiple streams of income um i can't remember i think it was you or i heard it somewhere maybe read it someone stated about i think it was 
millionaires. Every millionaire has at least seven streams of income. Absolutely. And I've been setting up different streams of income. Also, what I've been doing since it looks like we may finally be able to get this house, um, setting up a, a residual stream of income mm -hmm. where it literally pays the mortgage every month. There's nothing nice. I got to do. It's just literally paying the mortgage every month. Nice. And um, again, let me say this first. I just want to give all glory on the praise of the most high for that, because a few months ago, man, we were nowhere near this. Mm. So, but yeah, that's that's what I'm doing right now. What a blessing. What a blessing, man. And, um, you know, with, with you being uh, a fellow content creator, man, uh, talk to some of the people about what I was just going over as far as you being able to take a skill set and not only looking to monetize off of it from uh, a company that will hire you as an employee, but by you actually putting yourself in the position of being a contractor where uh, you have a certain set of skills, but then you can independently create your own stream of income by taking your skills and talking about it, uh, just like what we've both done on YouTube. What, what are your thoughts on that? I've had several people reach out to my email and they want to have me come and speak at these different organizations. I'm like, I never pictured myself going anywhere to speak. First off, right. <laughs> I was making YouTube videos. That was it. Yeah. They want me to speak over here and they're going to pay for it. Um, so that's them hiring me. But at the same time, I'm doing my own, you know, business and things of that nature on YouTube as well. So um, it's, 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 it's brand new. You know, I'm still trying to feel my way way out and way in through it. So I don't know if I am answer, answering the question correctly, but you are as far as contracting and being able to do my own thing. Just the content itself is like opening those doors for me to be able to do that. Absolutely. And, and you really touched on it perfectly, man. And that's the reason why I really use your situation as an example, because you're living proof. Right. We're not just giving you all theory. We're actually applying the things that we talk about on these broadcasts and people go out and get the results. So, for example, uh, in a bias situation, before a bias set up this YouTube channel, we had a, a, a pretty extensive consulting call. Yeah. And on that call, you know, I was telling a brother, hey, man, you know, it's not enough for you to just know the information that, you know, go out and monetize on it. Let's talk about the best platforms that you can take your knowledge um, and, and turn it into a monetizable gift. Now, real quick, Abaya, can you tell the people specifically uh, what your background is from your YouTube channel? Uh, my background, former paramedic, former police officer, uh, former sheriff deputy, um, now content creator, podcaster. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And so the reason why I brought that up, Abaya, is because there was a certain amount of money that you made from doing that at a job, right? Mm -hmm. There's also a certain amount of money <laughs> that you're making and can make from doing it on your own, using the exact same skills. My, my question to you is, which of the two provides you with better financial opportunities, the time that you did it at the job or the time that you did it for yourself? Using the knowledge I had when I was working as a police officer, I took that, applied with the information, you know, that you gave me and how to do so. And in three months, you know, you have your, you know, about the back office analytics and they show you what's going to be coming. In yeah. three months, I've earned my yearly salary wow. for the whole year. And wow. Actually, no, no, no. Let me rephrase that. Two and a half months. Third month's not up yet. It's still ongoing. So I've already reached my entire yearly salary in two and a half months. Do you all hear that? that I mean, these are opportunities, guys, that are open for you. <laughs> like, okay, Abaya, when you started creating content, did you ever think that within two months <laughs> you would be passing up your annual salary that you had from the nine to five job i i was thinking it was going to take me a, a year's out you know a year maybe yeah. whatever to you know get it rolling and most high blessed it and i never thought mm -hmm. in two and a half months you know you know i'm here where i am now absolutely you and know, and 
and, and you know a lot of people are by and I and I, I love the fact that you're on this broadcast, man, because you're such a great example of this. You know, there's so many people that still believe, oh, well, you know, if I don't have a degree in IT, then I can never make money, you know, through a computer. Or, you know, if, if I'm not doing prank videos <laughs> or something like that, you know, or an extremely charismatic person, that there's not a space for me to be able to monetize off of my knowledge and my skills. I mean, I, I don't think that when you started, just like you said, you didn't think that you was about to get rich off of it. But a lot of people just simply don't understand that, you know, a, a lot of us possess skills that we sleep on. A lot yeah. of us have a lot of gifts and talents that if we simply just told other people about it, we would be able to make more money off of just telling people about it rather than what we would get from a nine to five job. Yeah. Yeah. It's simply if you can find what find a problem and solve it for somebody using your skills, people pay for even if the information is readily available. Like what I teach, you can go and Google it. You can go find it. But in today's society, people prefer if you do the footwork, I'll just pay you to do it. There like, you, you know, go. I can mow my grass, but I, I'd rather pay somebody else to do it. Right. I hate mowing grass. So they will pay for the convenience of you using your skill to make their life easier. And that's what that's what it is. I mean, so you got to find that skill like you're saying. And most of us have those skills. Right. You, you, you're really tapping into some gyms right now, King. And it, it sounds so simple. It's going over a lot of people's heads. Abaya just said that. A lot of the content that he puts out there, you could Google it, but he's still highly compensated because people want to get that content from him. So a lot of y'all are thinking that, oh man, you know, I, I gotta, I have to innovate. I have to do something that nobody has ever done before. When in actuality, you don't understand that in media, it's not just about the information. It's about how the information is put together, who's presenting the information, and, and can you uh, speak to a window of people who want to hear that information directly from you, right? Like this, what I'm saying is it, it doesn't take away from a buyer. The brother is skilled. <laughs> Any of y'all that know this brother, he is a very talented and gifted brother, okay? But the point... I believe that we're both making is if we can do it, so can you. And there really isn't much of an excuse that we can have because if we're being compensated for giving out information in industries that are saturated with content that we talk about on this platform, you got a, a bunch of other people doing the exact same thing, the same way that you see us building an audience of people who specifically want to tap into us, you could do the exact same thing for you. Would you agree? I wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. I mean, and like you say, like, you know, I think one of the things people worry about too, and correct me if I'm wrong about it's already been done, you know, exactly. Or, you know, when I, the niche that I'm in, in content creation, when I started, they're like eight, nine major channels, yeah. 1.2 million subscribers and 500,000 subscribers. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to reach out to these guys and see if I can get them to uh, um, market my course or whatever. I give it to them for free or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And none of them really reached back. Right. right. So when the most I blessed the channel, they started growing. Guess what happened? What? They also call it me. <laughs> right? you know, Absolutely. I'm like, I'm the, I'm the, they're like who this new kid on the block right, right. so you are not calling me now but the thing is had i looked at that 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 niche or that genre and be like well it's already done i gotta find something else then i wouldn't have never tapped into it but right. took my skill what i know the advice that you gave me i applied it remember when we were talking i was Hey, I think I think um, Josiah thought I wasn't really paying attention because I was just staring. I wasn't saying anything, but I was focused. I'm <laughs> right. listening to everything and I'm writing this stuff down because yeah. I knew the information was valuable and I applied it and like clockwork, you know, the most I absolutely it just went like that. A absolutely, man. We're we're definitely living in interesting times because 
there's so many ways to make money right now that haven't been here ever before, mm -hmm. but yeah. yet at the same time, cost of living is increasing now like ever, like never before. So if right. people don't take advantage of these opportunities, just like we're doing, a lot of people are going to be left behind. So real quick before you, Jack King, you know, it's, it's, it's always a pleasure to have you in the building, my brother. I'm, I, I'm, I'm hoping that all of the good uh, uh, YouTube energy that you're getting is rubbing off a little bit here, man. Um, all, 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 all of, all of your growth, Hopefully. Send some of that. Send some of that to your brother, man. <laughs> but um, you know, just as you get out of here, man, we we love you for who you are as a brother. We appreciate all that you do um within this space. Can you just give any last words to the people that are watching online uh, about maybe some traps to avoid so that they don't get screwed financially and make sure that you let the people know about how they can uh, tap into your content and how they can uh, maybe uh, check out some of your, your premium content that you offer. Okay. Um, first things first, I think I saw a comment that where someone was asking what the channel, the channel is we, the people university. Um, what I do, I just give information because none of us are exempt from, today's issues concerning law enforcement you know and i know a lot of people are like hey what's the black problem what's actually black white hispanic asian everybody us mostly i get it but it's across the board so i just show live examples break it down tell you your rights so that if if it happens to you hopefully you don't have to use this information but if it does you will know what to do um a lot of people don't realize when you get stopped by a police officer there's a 70, 75 percent chance that you've literally left a hundred thousand dollars sitting on the side of the road, right? Most people don't know. Like they think you think that being snatched out of your car, beat up, shot, or taken to jail is a violation of your rights, but it's so much smaller than that. It's so much simpler. So, but you got to know these things in order to be able to capitalize on them. So that's what I teach. Um, I have a more in-depth teaching. I have an online course. If you're not familiar with it, and right now it's on sale. I got a fifty percent off. It's like sixty dollars right now. Check about five or six different chapters teaching you everything that you need to know dealing with law enforcement, how to protect your rights, because, you know, God forbid that you may need them one day. So if not, you can download my free ebook by going to we the people university dot com. We the people university dot com. There's a free ebook. Download ebook is going to give you the information that you need to know. So if you don't do anything, make sure you do that. Go subscribe to the channel as well. Um, as far as avoiding any financial traps. Um, I don't know what financial traps I could say to avoid, uh, but I do know that what you were talking about, me and my wife, we were just talking about it uh, not too long ago, like how to build an, another stream. It's not a trap, but it's a plus. Right. Um, what she did, she actually took out a loan, right? Because she deals with stocks, right? Okay. She took out a loan. So she took out the bank's money, $12,000. And she do, she deals with dividends. Now she can explain this more perfectly perfectly than I can, but I'm gonna give you an right. idea. She took I'm out twelve thousand dollars, put it into dividends, mm -hmm. and what happens? She's getting a, 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 a income in, in off of that right. monthly. So the money that she's getting from that is actually paying the loan back, and the other portion is going into the bank as auto payments on bills. So if you get what you get, what she did, she's right. actually taking somebody else's money to pay our bills. Absolutely. We and we put nothing into it except for a credit check. Right. Yeah. Y'all better love a buyer, man, because a buyer giving y'all that Patreon level game. Now, if it was me, I don't know. I don't know. We got to oh, see how these super chats are looking. I don't know if I'd let y'all get that one. I'm just playing. But no, the brother is definitely giving y'all some high level game. Keep going, fam. I know you you, you have more. Oh no, nah, that, that that was pretty much it. Um, so that that was just what we started doing. It was her. It was her idea. She's a she's I call her the human calculator, man. She do okay. numbers in the head like that. So, <laughs> yeah. but um, and I'm I'm actually trying to be, we're actually going to be setting her up, you know, on the same thing, content creation. And if we can get her off of her job where she doesn't have to clock in anymore and it's just we can work for ourselves. That's that's the goal. Nice. Um, well, I, I do have one financial trap. The financial trap is this. Don't stop yourself and don't reject valuable information. That is there a financial go. trap. There you go. There you go. And, and I love that you said that, man, because I do believe that, you know, we've been born into a system where people get told 
okay, go to this, go to this school for this amount of time, rack up these degrees, and then after you graduate, you don't have to learn anything anymore because you already have everything that you needed from that degree or that diploma. You know, um, I think that you are a living testimony that um, being a lifelong learner has its benefits. Like even for you to be a content creator about what your life was like as a paramedic and as a deputy officer, it wasn't enough just for you to know that alone. You still needed to learn new things so that way you could create the content on an online platform. So, OK, I know something about this. How do I uh, provide the ebook. How do I, you know, create the course? These are things that we didn't learn in school. And so, you know, just by having that willingness to be a lifelong learner and just take it step by step because you don't have to be a billionaire just to do this stuff. But if it could put just an extra dollar in your pocket and it's money that you can control doing it independently, then why wouldn't you do it? And like I said, in a biased situation, I mean, this brother does videos tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, going all the way into the millions of people will view this. So the opportunity to create unlimited income is far more viable in his case than for someone that's only limiting their wealth to a fixed salary that somebody else is handing out at a job, okay? You gotta know your worth and a big part of knowing your worth is putting yourself in a position to be able to make money without having it at a fixed rate. So thank you so much, my brother, for being on, man. It's always a pleasure. Uh, man, we wish you nothing but continued success, man. You, you, you're definitely doing it for all of us, man. I'm, I'm definitely uh, honored and humbled to say that I know this brother uh, and, and that, you know, I... I I was able to to say one or two good things to him, <laughs> you know, Five, on his road to success. Eight, nine, 10, 12. It was, <laughs> yeah, I got a list. I got notes over here. I'm telling y'all. Oh man, you, man. Thank, you, notes, I'm telling you. thank you, my brother. It's very kind, man. And uh, hey, Lord's will, we see you soon. All right, I appreciate it. All right now. So I want y'all to see, guys. Like I didn't plan <laughs> to have a buyer on this broadcast to tell you about how he unscrewed his way out of being in a financial bind. He just wanted to get on to see what we were going to talk about tonight. And his own testimony shows you how you can stop yourself from being uh, financially screwed. There are a lot of skills and experiences that you guys have that you take for granted that if you just told it to a, a, a public audience of people, you can make a lot more money from the people that want to consume the content rather than a job alone that's only going to pay you at a fixed rate. But again, don't just limit yourself to one thing. You know, we always talk about on this platform how to make multiple streams of income for, okay, here's what you guys need to do learn one skill but learn how to create different streams of income from that one skill. Have a skill that puts you in high demand and then find job opportunities from it, contractor in, uh, uh, opportunities from it, opportunities for you to be able to create your own content about it. Guys, you can do this, okay? Your generation is the main one that knows how to use computers. So let's get back to this topic at hand, why millennials are financially screwed. If you have not yet done so, please make sure that you smash that like button and please make sure that you donate so that way we can keep this broadcast going, okay? Even when we talk about my testimony, I went to school for a degree in information technology. But it wasn't until I applied the skills that I had from my IT degree into my own online business that within me setting up my first online course, I made more money in one week of online course sales than I made in two months working in corporate America. And I'm talking about the money that I was making as a manager of a team. OK, some of y'all know my background. I was an IT project manager. 
a campus recruiting manager, and the president of HP Austin's Black Employee Network. And I'm telling y'all, I took the exact same skill set but I just leveraged it in another place. I just put, took the exact same skills, put it in a different environment. And then that opened up the floodgates for new opportunities. And like Abaya said, you can make money online. You can make money through consulting. You can make money. That's another thing I got to tell you all about. I'm opening up the slots for consulting. Now, some of my consulting slots, guys, they've already been getting taken up. So if you haven't secured that spot yet for us to work together one on one, uh, it may not be available to you in November. OK, but again, I'm just showing you guys all these opportunities to know that once you really hone in on that one skill and you start thinking about different ways to monetize off of it. You can put yourself in a position of financial security. The reason why most people right now are not confident about their finances is because they've only been taught how to make money one way. And that one way, which is through a job, comes with no security at all. It is actually one of the um, slowest ways to be able to build wealth long term is one of the slowest ways to build wealth long term, and it is the most tax. As an employee, your income is the most taxable form of income out of all forms of work in America. This is the reason why some people just start up businesses, even if it's on the side, because they know that their money isn't taxed at the exact same rate as a business owner as it would be from working at a nine to five job. So let's get back into this, guys. OK, smash that like button and let's get some donations going. OK, if you don't want to use Cash App, feel free to use. Uh, I'm sorry, if you don't want to use a super chat, feel free to use Cash App or PayPal. The links are in the description below. So we talked about um, the job situation, okay? We talked about how in the modern society, you need to continually shift your job every few years unless you're being put at an extremely high level within the organization. Some of you guys might be on a C-suite or you're on a promising C-suite path. Some of you guys might be working for startups that they're giving you, you know, hundreds of shares. And when the shares vest in the IPO, you're really in the money, okay? Uh, if that's you, then it makes sense for you to stay around maybe a little bit longer. But if you are in an average job, you got to understand you cannot build wealth the same way that your parents and your grandparents did by working at the same job for 40 years and expecting a pension. The modern economy is about you job hopping. Because when you job hop, not only do you get better opportunities to negotiate every couple years, you're also able to stack your resume with all of the new positions that you're taking on. If you work at one job for 10 years, you might have been in the exact same role. But if you, if you switched at least four jobs within those 10 years, you're going to look so much more experienced in the eye of a recruiter, okay? Because you got all these different positions for all of these different companies that you've worked for. Now let's talk about the next thing. In this article, it talks about how we've taken on at least 300% more student debt than our parents. Guys, we need to pay that off as quickly as possible. I've said it on this platform before in some of our previous shows, but I'm going to say it again. Every last one of us needed to put ourselves on a five-year plan to get out of student loans. If y'all got family and friends that are in college now, you need to tell them, if you are taking out debt that you cannot pay off within five years' time after graduating from college, stop racking up the debt, okay? And... One of the ways that we rack up debt is that we don't put ourselves through any serious plan to pay it down. So if you're if you're one of those people, because there's a there's a large number of Americans, not everybody, but there's a large number of college graduates that say, oh, I'm just going to hold on to this debt for the rest of my life. I'm never going to pay it off. Sally Mae's not going to get no money from me. Well, you can't cry about 
what's going to happen to you? You can't cry about your suffering. The people that are going to win are the people that are going to pay it off and move on. Guys, a lot of y'all think that you're getting one over because you owe a hundred thousand dollars in debt and oh if i just pay you know just pay the minimum payment for the rest of my life it won't really affect me like that and the guys that paid off that debt lost do you really think i feel like i lost because i got out of student loan debt at 23 years old do you really think i look back on my life and i say you know what my biggest mistake was in life when i was 23 years old I became debt free. I took my hard earned money and instead of paying, uh, 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 buying a new house or a new car, I just gave it all to Sally Mae. And now my life is so bad at 34, all because I wanted to be debt free at 23. Do y'all really think that that was my biggest hang up? I promise you guys, I don't think anything about student loans or the money that I put towards it after that was behind me. A lot of times it's gotten so bad for me, I don't even remember that student loans are still a problem for most people. As It's been over a decade since I had it. So what I'm telling you guys is a lot of you guys are discounting your future because you are overestimating what you are experiencing in the present. You may feel the pain of, man, I'm in student loan debt. It's so much. Put your head down. Pay off as much of it as you can if it means that you got to go and live at home with your parents. Pay it off. A lot of the most successful guys that I know right now that are multimillionaires slept on somebody's couch throughout their 20s. They were living in the garage at their parents' place. They were rooming with friends, either from college or the military. Don't despise humble beginnings, okay? You don't need to be the man at 25. <laughs> this is a long game of success. A lot of us, y'all are so quick to try to outshine somebody on social media. You feel like if I'm not stunting at 25 or 35, I lost. Uh, 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 Colonel Sanders, he didn't blow up until his 60s. Ray A. Kroc, the guy that took McDonald's to the next level, he didn't start getting involved in McDonald's until his 50s. The average millionaire in America does not become a millionaire until they are 54 years old. But there are so many of us that live this flash in the pan lifestyle that we are actually sacrificing our long term all because we feel like we need to be winning in the short term right now. Every last one of us got to get out the mud. 11 years ago, my net worth was beyond negative $100,000. 10 years later, one of my assets alone is worth over half a million dollars. I'm, sh I'm saying that because I'm trying to show you how if you focus on the long-term outcome of things, that can help you tremendously. And I want to spend the rest of this time dealing with this. We're about half as likely to own a home as young adults were in 1975. Millennials and everybody else that tunes in to my broadcast, stop putting so much weight on a house. Stop thinking that the reason why you will or won't be wealthy is whether or not you are a homeowner. This is a part of the outdated thinking that accounts for the reason why so many of us are broke today. I've done shows on this broadcast where I've showed you guys that a third of all uh, millionaires, millennial millionaires got half their money in crypto. They did not come up off of the traditional way of buying the house with the nice picket fence. A lot of y'all still may not know that buying a house is not an asset. It is a liability. So when you become a homeowner, all that means is you're giving out money 
to companies paying for expenses. A lot of y'all think, oh, okay, well, at least when I give my money out this way is towards something that I own, but how much money are you putting towards all of the expenses of bricks, repairs, and renovations? How much money are you putting towards property taxes? How much are you accounting for all of the different costs that goes into being a homeowner, which is one of the most expensive uh, processes that most adults will ever take on? Half the reason why so many people are in the middle class right now is because they're homeowners. That's the reason why there's a lot of people who are millionaires and billionaires that don't even own a home. They'll rent a home, which is actually my next move for the upcoming year. A lot of y'all don't realize, okay, I was telling Abaya that I was under contract for a property, but that other property, I'm not looking to that property for me to live in right now as a homeowner. I'm looking to see, okay, you know what? How can I rent a property so that way I can get more ROI on the rental properties that I have right now. I'll own, rental, I'll own real estate investment properties and I'll rent out the units. But what I'm saying to you guys is, even if you're not on a level where you can invest in real estate, and I've shown you on other broadcasts how to be able to do it, Stop thinking that just because you can't buy a damn home that you're not <laughs> going to be financially successful. Instead of thinking a, a, a sink or swim about a home, what about all of these other investment opportunities that are afforded to you guys? You know, I'm I'm actually a firm believer that if I would have put my money into other uh, investments like the stock market and other index funds that I've been telling you all about, if I would have put the exact same money that I put towards my business and my real estate investment portfolio into the stock market, I very well could have gotten a better ROI from the stock market than I got could have gotten from real estate just purely due to the cost of inflation. It... Guys, there is more than one way to build wealth. And, you know, I mean, even with Abaya, he just told you what his wife did. She took out a, like a $12,000 loan, but she didn't spend the money on garbage. She started investing into the markets where she could get a dividend return. And she would just take the money that she got from the dividends and got that interest and then just started using it as a cash flow creator towards bills. OK, but this is all a part of financial literacy. And again, the reason why a lot of us ain't up on this is because we've gotten all of our financial advice from our parents and grandparents who all they did was work at one job for a billion years and then bought a home. So we'll say, I want to be successful like my daddy did. I'm going to go and get a job, work at it for 30 to 40 years and buy a home. That makes me successful just like them. No, you gotta, you're going to have to go through a different process. We're living in a different economy. You're going to have to take different steps. And even for those of y'all that can get a house right now, if y'all ain't really cashing in like that and you don't got no other forms of investments, get your investments going before you just try to think about being a homeowner. Stocks, cryptocurrencies, starting up your own businesses. I always tell you guys, you can hedge against the marketplace because if inflation goes up, guess how you can benefit off of it as a business owner? by you increasing your prices along with the market. The reason why millennials are financially screwed is because just like many Americans, we will always put ourselves on the receiving end of inflation rather than the people that control and benefit off of inflation. So if inflation adjusts the housing market, I won't take a L because as a real estate investor, when the money goes up in the market, my money will go up in my net worth. 
the inflation will rise for me. I can increase not only the price and the value of the house, but also the cost of rent. But let's say even you can't get into the housing market. Well, look at what's happening in the stock market. <laughs> look at, okay, the average gain, right, on some of these index funds has been with six to eight percent throughout the life of uh, uh, of when the index fund has been on the market. More millionaires have been made through the stock market than any other investment vehicle in the world. So it's not just real estate and it's not just stocks. You can have money in stocks, real estate, business, okay? And when you set up your business, then that's when you can create an unlimited income opportunity. Because just like I can set up a business where I have one thing going on YouTube, there's no limit to how much money you can make off of the platform. Shout out to my sister Ariel for the $10 super chat. You know, when LA for Life comes in and puts in a $100 super chat, YouTube doesn't say, oh, no, 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 no. You, you can only put in $10. <laughs> no, you could put in $10, $50, $100. Whatever you're looking to donate, you can do. So I have an unlimited income earning potential. And like I said to you before, I'm not just looking off of Super Chat money. I have a book, okay? I have a business. I have all these different opportunities. You guys can do the exact same thing. Don't limit yourself, guys. There's so many opportunities. And guess what? You're going to have to take them on if you want to be successful. If you still have the mindset that I'm only going to make income through one stream, you're going to be a part of the millennials that are financially screwed. Just telling you now, okay? Unless you are in the rare 1% of Americans that have, you know, a job that just pays you 300K or beyond. If you think that you're going to be financially free off of just one income stream alone from a nine to five job that you expect to be at for the next 30 years, unless you're the CEO or the CFO and getting real money from that job, you're going to have to find other ways to build wealth. And that's fine because the same way that we are in such trying times, you're also a part of a generation that has more opportunities now than ever before. You got guys like myself that's telling you how to make your own money, how to not limit yourself in the marketplace. So as we close this out, guys, this is what I want you to take away. Number one is that the formula that I gave you guys today, this is something that you can take and run with for the rest of your life. This has always been the formula to success. Henry Ford knows that. Bill Gates knows that. Steve Jobs knows that. The only difference is that during their time, America allowed a lot more people outside of them to win. But now the economy is shifting to where unless you start playing the exact same game that they were playing with the knowledge that they had, you're going to find yourself on the outs of society. The middle class is being cut. It's either the haves or the have nots. And you don't need to have Henry Ford's success. You just need to apply the same principles that Henry Ford used. OK, Henry Ford himself was not looking for an income through a nine to five only. He was looking to create the institutions for the nine to fives to be created. So who made more money, Henry Ford or the people that worked for him? That's what you got to start thinking about, guys. OK, the winning formula has always been consistent It's just now amplified because you must live by it if you want to succeed. All of that work at a job for 30 years and, you know, I can make minimum wage and I still afford an apartment. That day is done. Either you get with these financial principles or you're going to get left behind. Let's keep this in mind. OK, let's walk away with these things. One, follow the formula. Two. Stop worshiping home ownership as your only way to succeed financially. Three, start paying off debt ASAP. Do whatever you need to do. I don't care if you got to live back home with your mama. I don't care if you got to live in a garage. I don't care what it takes. Pay the debt off. And it doesn't need to be large payments. Just any little extra payments that you can make, make them.
Number three, increase your skill set. That way you won't have to rely on minimum wage. All this content is on YouTube. Why would you need to live off of a minimum wage? You got all the, you got all these people giving all these free game, showing you how to do it step by step. Why would you settle for a minimum wage income? Listen, anybody that's in this community, you should not be on minimum wage. If so, just go back and watch every episode that I've done on this platform alone. I promise you. Tell them I'm lying, LA for life. Tell the people that are watching this channel for the very first time. If all you did was go back and watch all of the shows that I've made on this platform, I promise you, you would have an income far beyond minimum wage. And that's just on the strength of what you know. You could just make money just repeating the exact same things that I said on the, on the broadcast. There's no reason, guys, for you to settle for anything less than your best, okay? Increase your skill set. Look for lucrative in-demand skills. Start investing ASAP. Start budgeting your money ASAP. OK, I've had other millennials on this broadcast. And one of the things that they were telling me is that they weren't operating off of a budget. Guys, you got to have a budget. I would have never been able to pay off my student loans had I not had a budget. I would not be able to uh, have a certain lifestyle right now had I not had a budget. You got to have a budget unless you unless you're stupid rich. And unless you got a business that is really killing it, you have to budget your money, guys. OK. And last but not least, you got to create unlimited income opportunities. So what I want you to take away from this article that we went over, y'all, is that the statistics that were quoted from this article is true. But you are not helpless. The only way that you will suffer guaranteed is if you know that this is coming and you don't do nothing about it. You follow the traditional methods. If you put yourself one step closer to applying the information that we went over in this broadcast, then you're making it that much more likely that you can still succeed in spite of housing going up, in spite of food costs going up, in spite of all these things going up, you can put yourself in a position to win. All right, y'all. So as y'all know, along with every broadcast, I give y'all two free stocks just so that you can hedge against being financially screwed, okay? Weeble, which is one of the fastest growing financial brokerage companies in the world, they're giving stocks away for free. So if you want to be an investor and if you want to make sure that you can have a good long-term financial strategy, set up an account, guys, okay? Because on Webull, not only does it allow you to invest in stocks, you can also invest in cryptocurrency. And if you guys want, go back and watch some of the previous shows that I did about investing in crypto and how it's done so that you can make the most of the marketplace, okay? I'm going to be doing another crypto uh, show very soon, probably this week, Lord willing. Make sure that you tune in on that so that way you can get started, okay? Um, guys, for those of you that want to know how to work with me uh, more so that way I can look maybe at your uh, situation personally, please make sure that you book a consultation, okay? Uh, this past week, I just started up opening slots for one-on-ones with me for one-hour sessions, okay? So if you guys want me to help you uh, start or grow your business or help you with improving your finances, okay, all you need to do is tap the link in the comments below to book a session. That's all you got to do, guys, okay? Once you click that link, it's going to show you how you can set up a one hour session with me. And like I'm telling y'all, I've got limited slots available. I only do consultations on select days. OK, I've got other business ventures going. OK, so uh, a diamond, you asked something about a how to book. Leave, leave me a comment. Let me know more. Um, oh, oh, about how to book a consultation. Yes, yes. Uh, just click that link, a diamond. When you click that link. 
That's when we can set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation. It's going to walk you through everything that you need to know. Just click the link. It'll tell you what days I'm available, uh, what times, uh, and then it'll give you the Zoom link to be able to tap in with me whenever you book your slot. All right. So uh, if you want to work with me, guys, there goes the link. Make sure that you uh, secure your slot, because once those slots run up, then that's when you're done for the month. OK, I don't have anything else available once those slots uh, are booked up. And like you all saw from We The People University, uh, a lot of the nuggets that uh, he got from that consultation led into uh, a lot more money <laughs> far beyond the cost that he had to pay just to be able to get that consultation going, guys. OK, so, guys, I can't wait to see you on the next broadcast. I'll be back on here tomorrow uh, at 7. I, you know what? I'm actually starting to think about doing these shows at another time. Be on the lookout for a poll, guys. OK, I'm going to ask you all what time you want me to start doing these shows in the evening. Leave me a comment to let me know uh, what times you want me to do these shows and let me know what you want me to talk about on the broadcast. OK, I'm the voice for the people. I'm here for you. So whenever works best for you. That's when I'll tap in with you. OK, so just leave me comments below. Let me know what you want me to talk about and what time. And before we go, I want to give another great shout out to all of the sponsors for tonight's broadcast. I want to give a shout out to REO for the ten dollar super chat. I want to give a shout out to We The People University for the fifty dollar super chat. Hey, guys, it's not too late to donate. If you love tonight's broadcast, feel free to give back, y'all. All right. Tap that dollar icon directly below the live chat. Or you can cash at me, cash at me, uh, dollar sign the Uzziah show, or you could donate via PayPal. The links are in the description below. Okay, I got to give a big shout out to the official sponsor of tonight's broadcast, LA for Life. As of right now, she's given the top donation with a hundred dollar super chat. I appreciate you so much, my sister. Thank you so much for pouring into me. Okay, I try my hardest to pour into you. Uh, and we really could not have this broadcast without your support. So let's definitely all give a big shout out uh, to all of our sponsors and a special thanks to LA for Life for making this show uh, possible. Until next time, guys, I will see you tomorrow, Lord willing. Have a great week. Keep pushing.